Okay, so let's start writing some JavaScript. And again, before I explain things, I typically show you what you can do. Uh, here we have an example where we define an HTML button uh, with text click on it, doesn't matter. And then we define on click. So whenever we click on this button, we do window alert test. Uh, so this is one way of doing JavaScript and I can just show you that. Um, I can just define a new file and say, simple example. So it's an HTML file and we do write HTML here. So I just do the, the basic structure. Um, I do my head, title tag, uh, and then I get into the body. And here I just say button type is a button and on click I execute uh, window.alert test. and the text of the button is click. So if I open this, and I can make it a bit larger. Um, if I open this, you will see what you would hopefully expect to see. Uh, there is our button, doesn't look very exciting. If I click on it, I get this alert window that says test and I can click OK and then it disappears again. If I do it again, it happens and actually now Firefox already says please block alert windows from this, it's annoying. So now nothing happens. Um, that's a browser functionality that has nothing to do with what we just programmed. So basically what we did now is we put JavaScript into the HTML in, in an attribute um, and this means we are reacting to an HTML event here to the on click event. And this is already an example of what event driven means, right? So we react to a user event. We'll get back to that later. Then the other definition you can do is an internal definition which is quite similar to CSS but instead of style you have script tags. Um, and those can be in the head or the body. So again, let's do this. Uh, here's my button and I let's say I just add some script tags uh, that say window.alert test2. Um, and now the, the interesting thing is of course here there is no event. It doesn't say when this executes and this means it executes as soon as the browser parses this. And the browser, remember, starts from the top, builds the DOM and once it gets here it does alert. Um, so if we test this, I get the alert directly when I load, test 2, and now when I click I get test. Uh, this is interesting because you can see how this happens. If I move the script tags before the button and reload, now you see that the alert window comes before the button is here. So the browser has only gotten until line six here and it has not yet put the button onto the screen. Um, so only when I click test, the button appears. So this shows you that it, it goes uh, basically in the order that the JavaScript is parsed. Um, finally, you can do the same with an external definition. So you can again have your script tags, but this time you define a source. So instead of putting code in here, you just define a JavaScript file uh, and put everything there. Uh, same story, it can be in the head, it can be in the body, uh, it, can be, it, it will be executed once it is parsed. Um, and this is analog to CSS, so you can put exactly the same into internal, external definitions. And the recommendations are also similar, that for readability, uh, for modularization, you should put things into external files. Um, so as a summary, you can have JavaScript as a part of an HTML attribute, as a, uh, triggered by an event. You can have it as an internal definition, you can have it as an external definition in its own file. And of course, same as with CSS, you can have multiple definitions at all levels. You can have three 
events that trigger something. You can have four internal definitions, five JavaScript files. This is possible. It's also very common, especially when you use libraries. Um, and similar to CSS, as I already said, for modularization, for readability, it's best to have external files because then you can reuse them across different HTML pages. You can change it in, in a single place uh, and you don't mix HTML and JavaScript code in the same file. Um, now, we discussed that for internal and external definitions, um, the code is parsed as soon as we get to the script tags or uh, the script. So the question is, where is it best to put the script tags? Uh, because, of course, it's good to have our JavaScript executed as soon as possible, but is it good that it's getting executed before the page loads or so on? So there are different options. Uh, and... The uh, important thing is, as you have seen with the button example, the construction of the DOM stops until the script is completely loaded. Uh, and in our case, we had an alert window, so it even blocked uh, the DOM construction until I click on OK. Uh, and this means if your script is large, or if you do something similar to what I just did, if you have something that blocks and waits for the user, then the website freezes, nothing happens. Um, and this is a bad user experience typically, because if you, let's say you load a 200 megabyte JavaScript file and until then nothing happens. So the user thinks your website is broken. Um, and because of that, the recommendation in the past used to be put it in the bottom of your body. So put the scripts at the very end. Uh, that means all the HTML elements are loaded. You can see the whole website and only then it's starting to freeze basically. It's starting to load the JavaScript. Um, this is the old way of doing it. It's still fine. Um, nowadays, uh, they have added in HTML5 two different attributes that you can add uh, that basically say, if you use async, for example, uh, it says, please load the JavaScript file uh, asynchronously in the background. Um, and this is practical because it directly starts loading, but at the same time, it doesn't block your DOM construction. So the recommendation nowadays is to say, put it in the head and use these attributes. Uh, the important thing is to know um, that this can be a bit tricky. This is why we don't cover it in detail. Uh, but imagine you have multiple scripts that depend on each other. Then loading them asynchronously is a bit difficult because it could happen that one script is loaded before the other one even though it should be the other way around and so on. So you have to be a bit careful about it. Um, and the other thing is what happens if your JavaScript code changes the DOM while it's being constructed. So those things are a bit tricky, uh, but basically you can do more advanced things today. For this course, it's not so relevant. I would say put it wherever it is, uh, wherever you feel like it's okay to go with the old recommendation and say, put it in the bottom. Uh, it's good enough for here. But for the future, when you build more advanced applications, you should be aware of that these two attributes exist.